Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of my Nepenthes tour. Um, we've done a lot of highland plants and we're going to work on some more highland plants here. I just left off when the misting system kicked on and um, so we're going to continue here with this Clabrata. Um, becoming a nice size. It's up to about here now. There we go. And I'm hoping it'll flower soon. That would be really nice. Here is one of my seed grown flavas. Here are a couple of my seed grown nigras. Love these plants. Such nice looking plants. Another flava right there, just starting to, um, to put out a tendril. This guy was in a little bit of rough shape. He was a gift. And um, he's coming back now with some new leaves. You can see some nice red color starting on his, his um, leaves as well. Um, another Ramspina that I think is a hybrid. My seed grown Bongso is back there. Oh, nope, that's a Nigra. Or Naga, sorry. That is a seed grown Naga. My Ime there, that's just from Best Carnu. Nope, it's from CZ Plants. Um, came out of tissue culture, still in a bag. Seed grown um, Raja. A little tiny um, Herliana. Glandulifera, the Pitopangii, which is there. Its pictures are kind of everywhere now. Little Merdensis back there. Cute little pictures. Getting some color in the Peristome. And that one there. Um, Argentia Armin, Highland Truncata, Stinophylla. Um, a bunch of Fusca and Phallix back here. Singalana. Here are my Alba and Gracilima, which I don't know if they're true or not. What else? Right in the front here, a couple of my... Name's gone, Edward Sienas. So they're doing quite nice. Pictures inflating. Another one here, pictures inflating, so that's nice. Um, it's going to be a nice plant from now on. It's it's got sort of its, it's getting away from those like baby pictures. Red hairy hamada, nice little pictures on it. Another couple over there, Attenbury eyes and Rajas. A few Argenti eyes in there. Um. Another Flava back there, an Ephipiata is right there. Um, that's a Raja back there. Yeah, things are doing quite well. My Tamini eyes, they are looking good. We'll move this tag down. So these are my keepers here, and I've been pumping the light to them. They've been doing really well. They um, definitely don't need any more light. Their light needs are easily satisfied. Mikey eye is hovering right above that. I'm going to zoom you back out so it's not so shaky. Um, some Izumi seedlings. Uh, a couple more Glabratas. There's a Diatis. Nice picture there. There's even a bigger one down below. Um, Jamban. Doing well. Doing nice as always. It's always picturing. It's super easy. And yeah, that's um, the top table. Now let's just take you down for one more sort of look down here. I don't know if the lights can be better or not to do this. We have a tentaculata down here. This is the Hamada Catapasa from AW. Not sure that it's very pure, but um, is what it is. Dubia. Dubia Mele. Mali, however you say it. Hamadas, the rest of them that go back, this, this is just where my Hamadas sort of hang out. They get some morning sun coming from that direction, but the shelf above them keeps the afternoon sun off of them. I'm going to swing you around this way. I opened it up from the side here. I never get to see this view very often either, so there's countless pictures. They're there. Like, look at them all back there. There's six right in, in this little area here. So I can see them starting to change shape a little bit. Maybe some intermediates getting ready for some uppers. Here's another nice one just about to come out. So very toothy though. 
that is still hands down one of my favorites that's why I have so many of them just an awesome plant doesn't take much light either I find they go really red really fast so anyways let's finish off the tour by slowly walking over to the warm side of the greenhouse and we'll look at some intermediates and some lowland plants so the warm side of the greenhouse has a lot of orchids in but um, here is a vichii and again you can see how red these are going I talked about in the first part or the first half of this video how I'm gonna have to adjust um, how plants are growing because they just get too much light too fast so it's only March and this guy is receiving maximum amount of light that he needs never mind April May June July August you know so he'll be hiding in the shadows soon this is my Fasoliana huge leaf jumps is all of a sudden if you look at it from aerial view turned into like a big plant this winter four new big leaves um, the first picture on the big leaves kind of is weak but I think that was due to lack of light this is another one that goes red really easily and is going to have to be moved down I find a lot of the lowlands don't need a huge amount of light they're they're really easily pleased um, this is my clipata and again you can see the the leaf here is just receiving a little bit too much light it's gone blotchy over the last couple weeks nice new leaf coming out Agnata is in here and I'm actually just sort of experimenting this is another Burbigii, Burbigii another red leaf you can see it doesn't get quite as much um, light as the Highland plant did but uh, it's still going really red so it's gonna have to be moved down Albo marginata my truncata I think I finally nailed it for this guy it's been years of sort of hit and miss um, decent sized leaves and then smaller leaves look at how small the leaf got here this this leaf is so tiny and that's one of the the newer leaves but then you're we're back to this now so that's nice um, happy about that it's growing nice new leaf here and it's a good plant it's probably two feet across anyways now and I'm gonna swing you over here ever so slowly and oops I think I even missed one I'm going to swing you back because I like this guy even though he's fairly unimpressive right now there's my campanulata just starting to um, sort of adjust and, and get going now so I'm happy about that as I say they don't grow on this shelf here but I wanted to show you another new plant that I just acquired up here under these lights so I'm happy about this guy as well I'm gonna put him just here for now I'll straighten everything up later my Holdenii it's brand new came in awesome looks really good super happy about him and let's just take a look in this chamber over here which is my ultra lowland chamber so we had an accident in here my Rafflesiana which is this one here that one there dried out the tray dried out and the leaves got kind of crispy on the bottom I uh, lost some pictures pretty saddened about that pretty bummed out uh, had some nice big pictures on it but um, it's it's okay I mean the the top leaves are fine I'll try to get in a little closer this is my Baikal it has got a, a good 18 inch two foot span on it and the pictures are nice they're sort of hard to see in here they're kind of everywhere and just sort of forming as well but um, doing well and then my Ampularia is down there I now have those two the Rafflesian and the Ampularia in a tray that if I see it's dry I just put some more water in it Bellardia I just moved in there last night here's another Baikal just a little guy and again he sits basically in a tray of water now because they just dry out so fast but yeah so that's what's happening in there for now and we have one more stop to make see if we can get to there with the camera filming we'll head over to the lowland chamber with the velosas in and I can't get there so I'm gonna stop it for a sec okay went that extra mile stopped the camera moved some shelves and opened the lid there so we can see in here so this gets nighttime temperatures of about 7 Celsius or 45 Fahrenheit 
which is only about five degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the, the rest of the Highland Nepenthes, but it's a little bit extra that they seem to need. So, some nice veloces. They're actually coming along nicely since the last update. I mean, they're, um, they're getting a nice spread to them now. These are four inch pots. You can probably hear the fan in there. The air circulation in here is quite intense. You can see like leaf movement and you can see like when the lid is closed you can see all these little um, spores on this stupid moss moving and wiggling around. So it's got a clear top to it. It does get direct sunlight for most of the year in here as well. But being it is a freezer, even though the sunlight would warm it up in here, the freezer just kicks on and keeps it cool. So this thing has the potential to get extremely bright, but stay very, very cool. And every night, no matter how hot it is in the summertime, these plants reach their nightly low of 45 Fahrenheit or seven Celsius. And that's kind of what they need there. Now I actually had to replace this freezer because my other one just crapped out on me. It was like 15 years old. And so I was without a freezer for a month, and believe it or not, I actually lost a Velosa in that month. It just had nighttime lows of, I don't know, 52, whatever the greenhouse was at the time, the, the Highland. And coincidentally, I lost a, a Velosa. So I think some of them don't need the high temperatures, but um, the Westuba ones definitely do. The AW ones need that high temperature. Here's an AW. Here's an AW. There is a Tambayukan, not from AW. Anyways, that is going to be it for this greenhouse update. I hope you liked this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.